car here, and we are out here on a beautiful October afternoon in Maryland in the DC suburbs to talk about field investigation photography. Now this is not evaluation of a witness submitted photo or video. This is about your own photography and videography when you go into the field. Now, we're not going to the field much right now these days because of the pandemic. Hopefully that'll get turned around next year and we'll be back out, boots on the ground, investigating real cases. I really think there's a lot of value in actually physically going to the place. And we'll talk about some of the reference missions for photography and videography. And there are more, and there's a lot of possibilities. What this is about is the basic trade-off for what gear you take with you for photography and videography. We're talking about nouns, not verbs. We're talking about things. In future videos, we'll talk about how with all kinds of equipment and tips and techniques. But right now, we're just gonna talk about what should you take? What should you pack for a camera? And, and of course, the answer is it depends, right? So let's talk about the basic missions. There are three basic missions I like to mention because they all have different parameters and, and different requirements. One is just your basic site recon. You're going to a site for less than a day, hopefully in daylight. You've got some good daylight to work with and you're gonna take pictures of the area. You're gonna take pictures of sight lines and you're gonna take photographs of possible areas where there might be evidence collection, but you're, you're not actually engaged in evidence collection. Now, for that, the requirements are decent image quality in daylight. And we want geotagging, that is we want the exact location of where every photograph was taken in the exact time. So we will be able to have a good record. We want to be able to also track ourselves as we go around the area so we know exactly where we walked and where we were at what time. And we don't really need to zoom in on anything very tightly. That's site recon. Evidence collection is very different. Evidence collection, you're taking a lot of photographs. You're not gonna be doing this very often. Evidence collection is a very rare type of activity. We've, evidence collection requires a lot of close-in photographs, so very, very short focus distance. We also need geotagging, and we generally are not taking wide angle shots, but we might, uh, to stage the context, take a, lot, take a few wide angle shots. So we need wide angle. And then the third mission is sky watching. Sky watching, you're just keeping an eye on the sky. Um, if you see something, generally speaking, you need to take possibly both wide angle and tight shots. You'll need, for, for Nighttime sky watching, you need very good low light capability. You need a very fast lens. You need um, the ability to mount on a tripod or a, a monopod in some cases. And there's a lot of other difficulties and techniques that we have to execute in sky watch videography and photography. So um, that's a whole area that I'm not gonna go into in depth, but the requirements are very similar except that we have the low light and we may need some telephoto capability. That will depend on the situation, of course. So can you do all that with just the phone you carry around in your pocket every day? Uh, most of it, uh, the performance will not be optimal, but this phone that you carry around with you has a little camera in all probability. Now, if you observe the lenses on your camera, you'll notice that they are tiny. The, the front one is extremely small. The, the lenses are so small that there's just not that much light that's gonna get in. Compare that to a dedicated camera and you'll see the difference. The difference is quite a lot. So there's more information in a dedicated, in the, in the sensor of a dedicated camera. It's a bigger, more sophisticated sensor. And so you're gonna get better performance. So the trade-off is you start with a smartphone, which is your lowest performance, cheapest, most portable option, and you go up. And as you go up, you gotta get better performance and better and more versatility or it's not worth it because you're spending more money and you're lugging around more stuff. And lugging around more stuff is not good. 
You want to avoid that when we can. For the site recon mission, yes, by all means, this is a fine instrument to do site recon. It's one of those things where you get 90% of the capability for 10% of the cost. So you do it. For site recon, yes. For evidence collection, a much more less common mission, you might want to borrow some additional gear because you're gonna to have to do some you might have to do some very tight macro shots which require more sophisticated equipment. You can borrow it or you can rent it or you can just try to do without it. There it's more like 70% of the performance for 20% of the cost. Now, sky watching, more performance is generally demanded, but you could still get something out of your smartphone. So we're not telling you you have to go out and buy expensive photographic equipment, especially since site recon is going to be by far your most common mission. So your, your cell phone may actually be perfectly adequate. Now, what about something kind of in between a really expensive pro level camera and a, a cell phone, something that provides really good go-to capability for a wide range of missions, but doesn't cost an arm and a leg and is very easy to transport. I can have, make some recommendations. Well, this is my particular favorite. I'll just get it out of my pack here. You see, it's quite small. There are other options like this, but this is a good one for several reasons that I'll explain. Now, I, I'm going to do a video, a short video, when I just discuss the best way to set this up and, and use it in the field. But this is called the Olympus Tough. This is the TG6, which I believe is their latest model. It has many virtues. For one thing, it is tough. You can take it underwater. You can expose it to any environmental condition you want within reason. Um, it turns on very fast. It has a 4X optical zoom, which is pretty good. And optical zoom is far superior to digital zoom. And we'll talk about that in another, another video. It has built-in GPS logging, which is great. You can, that means you not only know where you were, you know where each picture was taken in exact time. And you also have, it's fairly versatile, has some control, uh, has both manual and autofocus modes, shoots raw, does a lot of things that we like in a, in a more, more high-end camera. But it's not a high-end camera. It's, it's actually very reasonable, affordable. It's cheaper than most cell phones. So you might want to consider something like this. This is a really good go-to carry everywhere, ready for anything camera. And uh, I recommend it, but there, you may want to research other options as well. Now, finally, you know, wh when you really need the performance, you may have to go to something with interchangeable lenses. Interchangeable lenses are the high end of cameras. Uh, a lot of people have one at home. Many haven't used it in a long time because they have their cell phone. Uh, this is a, a Sony. And the basic thing that you have here is you have a lens that you can take off and replace with another lens. And you have a very good, good quality sensor behind that lens. And then there's a lot of other features that we won't discuss right now. But this is, you can, this is where the high performance begins. And it really begins in the lens and go, carries through the rest of the system. So this is a good lens. I bought it used. Uh, I'm very happy with it. 24 to 240. It's, it's a be ready for anything type of lens. It's got a 10x zoom, good quality. And so I'm ready to go out in the field in good or bad weather and anything that comes along I'm ready for with just this lens and then I may have with me another lens that's very good for macro and I may have a longer telephoto for some extraordinary circumstances. I also will carry a very fast prime lens which is a, uh, a small wide, wide-ish, not really wide angle, but wide-ish angle lens that has, uh, by fast I mean it has a lot of wide aperture. And that wide aperture allows it to gather a lot of light for low light situations. Uh, those lenses are great. Now we'll go into a future video into all kinds of different options that you will need for 
this type of camera. However, I want you to note that these are a lot more complex to operate. They require time, an investment of time, a commitment to really understand the equipment and use it properly. Or you can get worse results than you would get with your cell phone. And this is a general principle I want you to apply to everything you take into the field. Don't take anything into the field you're not comfortable with and familiar with and know how to operate. In particular, a camera like this, you should be able to operate in the dark. You should be able to operate it almost without looking at it. And you should be able, should know how to use the apps on your phone to control it. There's a lot of things that you can do with a camera like this. It has tremendous performance and versatility compared to a cell phone, but you're gonna to have to make that commitment. So typically, the field investigators who take cameras like this are people who are already photography hobbyists or even photography pros and know what they're doing. Unless you decide now, okay, I would like to do that, you're gonna to have to basically become a photography hobbyist because you're gonna to need to walk around with this, this camera and this lens and other lenses a lot and take a lot of pictures to learn how to use it properly and how to get the best out of it. So that's the trade-off. It's not just cost, it's not just size and weight, it's complexity. And also with cameras like this, a lot of other gear comes along typically, like a monopod, um, gimbals, all kinds of other types of things that are great, useful, but now we're carrying a lot of stuff. And remember, we want to say inconspicuous. So carrying a lot of gear is, is not your best option. So yes, get one if you are either are familiar or want to become familiar with this type of photography. It is kind of fun, and there's a lot of things you can do with it. It's not just snapshots of the kids. That's the trade-off. But you don't, but what I, the message I have for you is you don't have to get one. If you do, you'll have more capability. All right, so that's it. I just want you to know, yes, you can use your smartphone. You don't have to buy a, a fancy schmancy camera, but if you want to buy a fancy schmancy camera, you will pick up some capabilities. And we'll talk more in future videos, not only about how to operate the, these cameras and how to take them into the field and get the best out of them, we'll talk about some of the specific missions and, and how to set up for them. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna go, it's gonna take probably three or four years to do all those videos, but we'll, we'll, have, uh, we'll have some actual field experience that we'll go out and, and try to get video of that. So we'll have, um, have something to share with you that'll be more than just me standing here talking. And so we'll see you next time on the Field Investigator's Backpack. If you have any questions, if you wanna ask them publicly, ask them down below in the comments. If you want to ask them privately, you can email me reportaufo at protonmail.com and that's a, an encrypted email, so I can answer that privately. You can also go to our contact form, which is there's a link down below on our website. Uh, if you want to report a UFO sighting, go to reportaufo.org and report it anonymously there. We will never reveal your identity to the public. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like below, and I recommend hitting subscribe so you always see our latest videos. We do a lot of videos, not only this type of training thing, but we do witness submitted videos, we do case summaries, and our podcast is also on YouTube, the same channel. So if you subscribe, you get all that, and I hope you enjoy it. See you next time.